So now we're ready for note set number six. So go ahead and flip to your table of contents page. We're ready for our sixth set of notes. And those are going to be multiplying polynomials on page eight. So let's write that down. Page eight is going to be multiply polynomials. Page eight is multiply polynomials. Now, once you have that written down, go ahead and flip to page eight. So I'm gonna do that now. And it's on the back of a page, so I'm gonna just fold my notebook that way. Now, these set of notes are printed on front to back. So you're only gonna get one of these, whether you're online or in class. And when you get it, you need to take it and fold it in half so it looks like a booklet. And once you have it folded, then we'll tape it down. We've done one of these before. And remember, I said we do a lot of these. So here it is folded in half. I can open the inside and I've got some practice problems on the inside. So now that we have it folded, let's tape it down. Remember to open it before you tape it down and you'll just need four small pieces of tape to put in each corner. So let's go ahead and do that now. Real quick. All right, and now we are ready to take some notes. Okay, so now let's actually talk about multiplying polynomials. Before we actually do it, I wanna talk about these steps on how you do it. It's real simple. The first one, it says, Blank each term of the first polynomial to every term of the second polynomial. So that means when we're multiplying, we're going to distribute, which we've been practicing doing that already. So we're going to distribute each term of the first polynomial to every term of the second polynomial. Okay? And there's a reminder right there that you have to... Remember, when you multiply coefficients, which are the numbers, you're gonna multiply the numbers, but then you're gonna add the exponents, which you'll see what I mean when we get to a problem like that. And then the second thing is to combine like terms, if you can. So combine like terms. And then I put, if you can. Sometimes you can't, but most oftentimes you can always combine like terms. So make sure you're looking for that and give the simplified answer. Okay, so now let's look at problem number one. Now, if we talk about classifying these expressions, we have a monomial out here on the outside. Remember, that's just one term. And on the inside, there are three terms. So that's going to be a trinomial. So we're multiplying a monomial times a trinomial. This should look pretty familiar because you're just distributing the one number. So keep that in mind. So what we're going to do is we're just going to distribute this 5 in there to all three of those things, okay? And then we just multiply. So five times x squared is going to be five x squared. Five times three x, so five times three is 15, and then I've got that x, so 15 x, and then five times negative two is negative two. Then I make sure that I can combine like terms, and I go ahead and do that if I can, but if I look, I've got x squared, x, and then just a number. So this one's done, and it's in the correct order. So there it is. That's how you multiply polynomials. That's an easy one. They get a little bit more difficult, but I'll show you how those work. All right, check out number two. So number two is where that reminder comes in about the exponents. So we are multiplying a monomial. There's one term times a binomial. There are two terms on the inside, so monomial times binomial. But what we're gonna do is we're still gonna distribute like normal. We're gonna distribute twice because there's two terms on the inside. So now we have x to the fourth times x to the third. Well, we have to think about what numbers are actually in front of those x's, which they're both ones. So it's just gonna be one x to the seventh power. The reason why we get seven is because there are four x's on the outside and three on the inside. So when we add them together, there are seven total. So that's what we have to remember when we are multiplying polynomials. 
okay? So then we have x to the fourth times 2x squared. So this number right here is a 1, so that's 1 times 2. So that's plus 2x to the, and then I just count how many x's. So I've got 4 out there, 2 right there, so that's going to be 6 total. Then I just double check to make sure I can combine like terms. If I can, go ahead and do that. This one you cannot because you cannot combine x to the seventh and x to the sixth. So we're done. Okay. All right, check out number three. Number three, same thing. We're gonna have to keep track of those exponents. Now, this time we have a monomial on the outside and a trinomial on the inside. I know it's a trinomial because there are three terms. Three, tri, you know, okay? So now let's go ahead and distribute that 3x squared. So I'm gonna draw myself three arrows to make sure that I remember to distribute to all of those things. All right, and then we just multiply. So we have 3x squared times 4x squared, so focus on the numbers first. So that's three times four, so that's gonna be 12x to the, and then we just count our x's. So there's two on the outside, two right there. So four all together. Now we're looking at this middle term. So three x squared times negative five x. So three times negative five is minus 15. And then there are three x's. So x cubed. And then our last one, we have 3x squared times 7. So this one, 3 times 7 is 21. So plus 21x squared. Double check to make sure you cannot combine like terms. So my exponents are 4, 3, and 2. And they are in descending order, so I'm done. And that's how we multiply with a monomial on the outside. So when we just have one number on the outside, that's how we do it. Those you should be pretty used to because you actually do those in middle school. So hopefully that wasn't too terrible for you. Now I want you to flip over to the inside of the foldable and you're gonna just take a look at these problems real quick. They are slightly different than the ones on the front so the ones on the front only had one term out there on the outside of the parentheses. Well, when you get to the inside, you're looking at like this one right here. We have two terms times two terms, two terms times two terms. This side is two terms by two terms. And this one is we got two terms by three terms. So they can get a little bit more difficult, but if you learn the process of how to multiply, it, it follows the same procedure every time. So when we go to do these quote unquote bigger problems, there are two ways normally that you can do them. These are the most popular two. So I'm gonna show you both, and then you get to pick which one you actually do. So I could care less which one of these you choose, choose the one that works best for you. I personally always do this one because when I was a kid and I was your age, this one didn't exist yet. So this is how I was taught. So this is the way that I do it. But now we have this way, which is a little bit nicer to look at. So again, choose which one you like and go with it. I personally don't care. I can read either one. So just pick which one works best for you. We are going to look at problem number four together. Problem number four has the same expressions that we're multiplying together, but I'm gonna show you how to do it with the FOIL method first, and then I'll show you how to do it with the box method. So we should end up with the same answer for both of them because it's the same problem. It's just two different methods to do it. So here's what we're looking at. And then remember, you get to pick which one you like to do and then go from there. Okay, so the FOIL method, the word FOIL helps to remind us on what order to multiply in. So remember, multiplication is all about distributing numbers and doing all that. So I'm going to show you what the letters mean and then how to actually use the letters of FOIL to multiply this out. So 
The F in FOIL means that we are going to multiply the first terms together. Okay? So that's first terms. So that, so here's what that means. We have a binomial over here on this first one, and we have a binomial over here on the second one. So that means there's two terms each. When we talk about the first terms of both of them, we're talking about the 2x and that x. So I always draw an arrow to show, hey, I'm going to multiply those two together. So let's write that out. So 2x times x is just 2x squared. Okay. And there's that one. So I'm going to use a different color for all these letters. The O in FOIL stands for you're going to multiply the outer terms. That's pink. You really can't tell, but it is pink. So the O again means we're going to multiply the outer terms. So when we th think about outer terms, you're looking at this as a whole, and the outside two terms is what you're going to multiply. So that's going to be 2x times 3. So 2x times 3 is plus 6x. Okay, the next one is the i, which i means we are going to multiply the inner terms. The green one. Is not working very well. Okay, so we're going to multiply the inner terms. So that means we're you now looking at this thing as a whole. We're going to multiply that four times x. I think my green pen is going out. Okay, so we have 4 times x, which is 4x. Okay, and then the L stands for last terms. So we're going to multiply the last terms together, which are 4 times 3. And 4 times 3 is 12, so we got plus 12 there at the end. Okay, so now remember, so we have done the multiplication part. That's the hardest part. Now it's just simplifying and making sure that we got all of our like terms. These, when you have bigger things that you're multiplying, like a binomial times a binomial, you can most oftentimes combine like terms at the end. So make sure you're looking out for that. So when we combine like terms, we start with our highest exponent. And if we can't combine anything, just drop it down. So that's x squared. That's the only one. So we have 2x squared. And then I need to multiply or combine the next term, which is this right here. So 6x plus 4x is 10x. And then that plus 12 doesn't have anybody to combine with, so I'm just going to drop it down. And that's your final answer. And that's it. So that's how you use the word FOIL to come up with what you're doing. So here's the one thing that I want to point out, okay? Some people may be able to see it, some may not. Remember, multiplying is just distributing. So I want, I want to cover up everything underneath here. If I cover up that 4, let me get a smaller piece of post-it note. If I cover up that plus 4, all we did with that 2x is distribute into that second set of parentheses. We just distributed twice like we were normally supposed to. And when you do that, that covers the f and the o. Well, then we got to distribute that 
positive four. Well, so I draw the arrows on the bottom just to make sure that I distribute everywhere. And we distribute twice because there are two terms back there. Well, when you do that, it covers the I and the L. So what you're doing is just distributing the number of times that you're supposed to. Just the word FOIL helps us to remember which ones we're supposed to multiply together. Okay, so that's the FOIL method. I'm now going to show you the box method. So remember, we are multiplying the box method. We're just gonna draw a box and do it with the box method instead. So I'm gonna show you that one. So right over there to the right. And then remember, you get to choose which one you like best. So the box method, it says the size of the box depends on how many terms there are. So we're, we have to decide how big of a box to draw. Well, how you determine that is you figure out how many terms are in each expression. So this one, there are two terms in there. So we have 2x and plus 4, so that's two terms. This one has two terms. So because of that, this is a 2 by 2. So you're going to draw a 2 by 2 box. So what I mean, 2 by 2 box, here's what I mean. It's going to look like a window. I always draw my box, and this one has two terms in it, so there are two. And then the second one has two terms in it, so there are two. This is a two by two box. So that's how you figure out how big of a box you have to draw. So now we need to put our polynomials where they go. I always put this first one on the vertical side. So here's how it works out. This 2x goes up there, and the plus 4 goes down there. So that's my polynomial, 2x plus 4. Then the second one, x plus 3, is going to go up here on the top. So now we've set the box up, so now we actually have to do the multiplication. Now, if you remember from your science classes, this looks like the Punnett square in science. Remember when you had like the red and white flowers and you were trying to figure out what percentage would be pink flowers? This is what this is. So the Punnett square and this is the same, okay? So here's how we actually multiply out with the box method. We need to focus on one little box at a time to figure out what goes in there. That's the actual multiplying part. So to get this top left box, I cover up everything else, and I am multiplying 2x times x. So 2x times x is 2x squared. Now, to get this top right box, I'm going to multiply 2x times 3, which is going to be 6x. Okay. Bottom left box is 4 times x, which is 4x. And then this bottom right box is just 4 times 3, which is 12. Okay? So I'll give you a couple seconds to catch up to me. So that's how you get the numbers in the box. So now, if you look, all of the numbers that we have come up with inside this box here are the same numbers that we come up with over here. Now, you cannot stop right here. No teacher will take this as an answer. I, if you gave me this, I would be like, oh man, you went like 95% of the way, but you didn't write out the simplified correct answer. Okay, so do not stop right here. You need to finish combining like terms and all that good stuff. So for this one, we need to combine like terms just like we would normally. Start with your highest exponent, which in this case is our 2x squared. Check to make sure there are no other squareds in there. If there's not, we have 2x squared. And then go to the next one, which are the x's. Now, the cool thing about the box method is they're usually on a diagonal, okay? So, like terms are usually on a diagonal like that. So, then 4x plus 6x is just 10x. 
and then we have 12 down there at the bottom, which has nothing to combine to. And there we go. So, again, we get the same answer no matter which method you use, whether it's the FOIL method or the box method. Here's the thing. The FOIL method, which granted, you're not going to have all those words written out. You're going to have to, you're going to remember that. So this is what you're looking at. You're looking at drawing four arrows and multiplying it out like that. Or you're looking at drawing a box that has four squares and multiplying it out like that. This one, I will say, is more visual, visually appealing. So if you are a visual learner, this one is most likely going to be the best one for you. But if you're not a visual learner, then you could probably do either one. It does not matter to me because, as you can see, you end up with the same answer regardless of which one you choose. Okay? So both of them show you and represent multiplication, and that's what I care about. All right, now let's look at number five. So for the purpose of these notes, we're going to actually practice the FOIL and the BOX method both so that way you get the idea of how both of them work but then on our practice problems that i'm going to give you unless it specifies you can choose whichever one you want so let's use the foil method on this first one now i do not i covered up the letters but you still have it on your note so if you need them look back up there so f stands for the first terms so i'm going to take that x squared and multiply it against that x. So x squared times x is x cubed. O is the outer terms. So x squared times 2, which is going to be 2x squared. The I is the inside, so that's 3 times x, so plus 3x, and then L is the last terms, so that's 3 and 2, and 3 times 2 is 6. Now, what I need to do at this point is check to make sure I do not have any like terms. If I do, I combine them. Keep in mind, most of the time you do. This one, it turns out that we do not because we have an x cubed, x squared, x, and then just a number. So this one is actually finished and that's all there is to it. Now, remember, I want to stress the FOIL method is just a word to help you remember what you're multiplying. So what we did was we took that x squared and drew our two arrows and multiplied it in there. And then once we got done with that one, we took that plus 3, drew our arrows, and multiplied it in there. So all you're doing is distributing. The word FOIL just helps you to distribute in an orderly fashion to make sure you don't forget anything. Okay? Let's check out the second part of number five, which is the box method. So when you think about the box method, the first thing that you have to think about is what size box am I about to draw, okay? So look at the number of terms that they, that they have. This one has two terms and this one also has two terms. So this one is another two by two box. So keep in mind, I always know that a two by two looks like a window. So just draw a square and then just draw the little crossbars in there. And there's our two by two box. Now, remember, I always put the first one on the vertical side and the second one is on the top. So let's label out our box. So we have x squared plus three. And then at the top, I'm gonna have x plus two. Make sure that you always have that sign right there because if you don't, a lot of students get confused. So make sure if it's a positive or a plus three up there that you actually write it down there. All right, and now we just do some multiplication. So remember, the top left box, those are the two things that you multiply. So x squared times x. 
which is going to be x cubed. And then I always go across, so the next one I'm going to do is top right. So I have x squared times 2. So that's 2x squared. And then I go bottom left, which is 3 times x. And then bottom right is 3 times 2, which is 6. Now, remember, you cannot... Sorry, I dropped my pen. You cannot leave your answer like this. I know what you have done, but that is not simplified and written in the correct form. So make sure after you do all the hard work and multiply, actually write out what it is right underneath that box. Start with your highest exponent and work your way down. So this one is x cubed. Make sure there's nothing to combine to. Then go to squareds. This one is not the same, so we can't combine. So we have 2x squared plus 3x plus 6. And here's our final answer. Now again, notice regardless of which method you chose, you got the same answer. So typically, remember, if you like organization and looking at pictures and charts and stuff like that and you're a visual learner, this one typically works better for you. But keep in mind, I do not care which one you use unless I tell you, hey, use the FOIL method. If I do that, then you obviously have to use the FOIL method. Okay? Now, let's take a look at 6 and 7. Because they are both bigger problems. Okay? If you look at number 6, this is two terms. So, that's a binomial times three terms. So, trinomial. So, this is binomial and trinomial. Seven is the same way. Binomial, trinomial. So we are going to work these out with each method. I'm not going to make us do both of them for each of them like I have been. So number six, it says find the product using the FOIL method. Now the word FOIL works if you have a two by two expression that you're multiplying. This right here won't work. The word FOIL will not work, but the idea of FOIL will work. So the idea of FOIL, keep in mind, is that we cover up that two and then we take that X and distribute in there. So that's what I'm gonna show you because that's what the FOIL method shows you. So let's do it that way. So. I'm going to cover up that too so we can't see it. We have x times x squared. So that's going to be x cubed. Then I have x times negative 5x. So that's minus 5x squared because there's two x's. And then my final one is x times positive 4. So that's 4x. So that's what the FOIL method actually shows you. If you stop right here, you have only done half of it. Because remember, there is a plus 2 that we now have to distribute. So I'm going to cover up that x so that way we know what we're doing. And I'm going to go ahead and draw my arrows. I always like to draw the arrows on the bottom so that way I don't lose track. Because if you draw them all on the top, they all get like jumbled together and harder to see. So try drawing them on the bottom. It'll help. Okay. So now 2 times x squared. So plus 2x squared. 2 times negative 5x. So 2 times negative 5 is negative 10x. And then 2 times 4 is 8. So, we have done the multiplication using the FOIL method. That showed you the FOIL method. Just longer process. So, now we need to address this and combine like terms if we can. So, all, right off the bat, I see that we have two x squareds that we need to combine and then two x's. So, we need to clean up the middle of this and then we'll be done. So, 
Start with your highest exponent. Remember, those always come first. So we got x cubed. This is the only x cubed. So I'm just going to bring that down. And then we're going to look at x squared. So I'm going to put a box around the x squared. And so this is negative 5x squared plus 2x squared. So that's negative 5 plus 2, which is negative 3 x squared. Now that I got my squareds done, I'm going to take care of the x's. And so this is 4x minus 10x. So that's 4 minus 10. So that's negative. So it's going to be negative 6x. And then that plus 8 there at the end doesn't have anything to combine with, so we'll just drop it down. And there we go. This is our final simplified polynomial. So, I know it looks intimidating when you see something that big on your paper, but just cover one up. Do it with your finger if you have to. Draw your arrows out of what you're multiplying and then cover up the other one and draw your arrows out. If you draw the arrows out, it'll keep everything organized and it'll keep track, help you keep track of what you have multiplied, okay? All right, we have one more that we're gonna do together in this note set. Number seven. So it says find the product using the box method. Product is multiplication, I forgot to mention that. Product, it means multiplication. And we're gonna use the box method on this one. So the box method, first thing you have to do is figure out how big of a box you're gonna draw, and that depends strictly on the number of terms in each polynomial. So this one is two. And this one has three. So we're drawing a two by three box this time. So here's how that looks. And you can use the paper behind your notes. You can barely see it on here, but you can kind of see the lines. I always draw this side first. So I'm gonna draw a line that covers about two lines. And then I'm gonna go over, cause this is the direction that I need my three in. So there's my two. I got it split into two, and now I need to take this long side and split it into three. And so I, this is how you do it. So here is a two by three box. Once you have stuff that looks like this, this one, it matters where you put stuff because this, if you try to put this trinomial on the vertical side, there's not enough space for it. So we have X plus five, and then I'm gonna write out that trinomial on the top. So we have x cubed plus 6x squared plus 18x. Okay? So that's how you set up the box. That's the new part, so we're gonna have to practice doing that. And now we just multiply and fill out these boxes on the inside. So remember, how you get the stuff that's in that box is you're looking at the stuff that, that falls under in each column and row. So cover it up if you have to. So that top left box is x times x cubed. So that's gonna be x to the fourth. It's the fourth because I've got one here, three here, so it's gonna be four. And remember, I go across. So then I'm gonna do x times 6x squared. So that's one times six, and that's gonna be x cubed, because there's two and then one there. And then the top right is x times 18x. So that's 18x squared. So there's the top row. And now the bottom, so bottom left, I'm looking at five times x cubed. So that's just five x cubed. Bottom middle is five times six x squared. So five times six is 30. And then I got that x squared. And then bottom right, we have five times 18 x. Well, five times 18 is 90. 
and then I got that X. Now, remember, you cannot leave it like this. You have went almost all the way, so don't stop right here. List it out in the simplified, correct form. So, always start with your highest exponent. And I will tell you a trick to these. Your highest exponent is usually in the top left part of the box. So, we have x to the fourth. There are no x to the fourths. So, that's my only one. And I like work my way down, so I'll cover that up. Now, I go x to the thirds. And if you look, x to the third, we have two boxes that have them, and they're diagonal. That's the cool thing about the box. So now we combine this. So we have 5x cubed plus 6x cubed. Oh, I knew it was plus because both of these are positive. So 5 plus 6 is 11. So we have 11x cubed. So then I've done those. Now I'm going to go to the squares. So I have, remember, both of these are positive, so that's just 30x squared plus 18x squared. So 30 and 18 is 48x squared. And then this bottom one down here doesn't have anything to combine to, so I'm just going to bring it down. So 90x. And there we go. And if you want to double check yourself, you can just kind of like skim through there, make sure that you don't have any like terms, which we don't, so we're good. And there you go. So that's it. So I'm going to show you number five again real quick, just to remind you. These are the two methods that we have to multiply. I do not care which one you use unless I tell you, hey, use the box method on this one. You can choose either one of these that you like. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some practice problems. Just kind of practice with it, and then you'll see which one you like better, and then just make sure that you're confident because this is a pretty easy thing as long as we get some practice in and bring your confidence up. You got this.